event. My name is Steve Spray. And Dave I, Robart. I've got my man Dave here. So listen guys, we're gonna talk today about role playing. This is something that Dave and I, uh, we, we actually were not born with this skill. Um, no. We learned it and we mastered it, we perfected it. We had Grant Cardone, the greatest sales trainer of all time, actually teach us exactly what to do to be successful. And with the results of role playing, we've been able to learn and understand Cardone University uh, like at a much faster rate. We've been able to close multi-million dollar deals. We've closed probably, between me and Dave, we probably closed at least 40 million in sales yeah. for Grant Cardone. So today, what we wanna do is actually show you how to perfect role play, so that way you can do it as well, that way you can have the same type of results that we've had. So there's a few rules, and with rules come freedom. You just need to know the rules. One of the, one of the first rules of role play is you wanna make it real. That's right. It needs to be something that really happens. Not too soft, not too hard. Don't make things up. Use things that actually happen on the call. So what Grant would tell you is one of the first things that you should do is have a notepad next to you, one to take notes, and one to write down every objection that you would ever get. And then over a week, take the top two and role play those. Uh, the second rule is when you roll, after making it real, role play, there's gonna be an A and there's gonna be a B player. A player and B player. One person is the salesperson, the next person is the client. The salesperson is gonna start and you wanna start in a very specific part of the process, either the greeting, the fact finding, the demo, the write up, or the close. Mm -hmm. If you're brand new, it's your first two or three days role playing, it's okay to have your script in front of you. And you, you should have your script in front of you, to be honest, like that's probably, I mean, I would I would say like, we. I don't know if we dropped our script for maybe a long time, I mean, maybe, at least maybe a year. Yeah. Like we would always have our script, we would work it out, because what we were trying to go for was, we were trying to, to actually understand it in a way where like we knew the script perfectly. That way if we get pushed off our script by different objections or different things like that, we knew how to slide back on and, and, and for us to stay the same. So one thing you wanna know is when you're doing these pitches, you wanna be the stable one. You wanna make sure that you are the one because you're gonna hear people with different objections, different problems, the reasons why they don't wanna do it, blah, 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 blah and it's always gonna be random, but if you are not random and you do the same thing every single time, you're gonna be able to predict results. Well, you can't uh, really do that unless you practice it, unless you perfect it, and that's what you're trying to do with role play. So along with having the script in front of you, you want to be real, you wanna be real. Some, some people say, well, you wanna to be tough on the other person. You don't wanna just hammer somebody, you wanna be able to, your response, like if Steve's role playing with me, and I'm going and it's my turn and I start sounding like uh or um or I'm asking questions that really don't make sense and I get off my script, it's Steve's responsibility to make me better. It's not his responsibility to just punch me in the face and hammer me. He needs to say the word flunk and at flunk, I need to stop. I don't, I don't wanna fix what I'm doing at the time, I wanna stop and then go back and, and what Grant says is you wanna iron out where you're having trouble. So Steve wants to say flunk. Now, if I get through what we're working on, whether it's the greeting, the fact, finding the clothes, handling a certain objection, and I do it right, Steve needs to say pass to anchor in or reinforce, that's exactly how you do it. And then the third lesson would be, it needs to be done every day. Yeah, if you don't do it every day, you will get rusty. It is something that, that I will tell you, uh, the greats cannot bypass this practice thing. This is a muscle that must be built and it must be maintained or you will lose it. And so that's why role playing needs to happen every single day. That's why if you come to our office for like a 10X HQ day, mm. you'll see us do training and then you'll see us do role play every single day. I've been role playing every single day for eight years here. So, you know, I've been role, if I can do it, if I do the same scripts all the time and if I'm up here telling you that it takes less than one day for the greatest to get rusty, I'm telling you right now, this might be one of the most important things for you. Yeah, but Steve, you've got like 15, 20 million in sales. You've got a, a championship uh, salesperson of the year. You, you're a millionaire. Uh, Cardone Capital paying you every, every single month. You've got, uh, exactly. you're, you're winning. Why would you need to, why, why do you gotta keep role playing every day? Don't you know how to do your job? Exactly, well, that's a good question, Dave. And the answer is, 
uh, I'm not going to back off on the things that got me to Ooh. all of those success levels. And so what I want to do is I want to double down on what works. Role playing always works if it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. So me and Dave are here to show you how to do it correctly. So let's let, let's stand up. Let, you want to stand up and show them how we do it? I think just this? just for the camera. I think you might probably make you just. We can okay. We can do it that way. You, yeah. Usually in the morning. So we're standing. We're going face to face. And what we want to do is role play a situation or a scenario. We, let's just go with our, our standard greeting, where we're trying to cold call, trying to get into uh, trying to get into the door, trying to pitch Carter University. And what we're going to do is we're going to play out exactly what happens. Now, the first time through, I'm not going to do it that well because I want you to see what it looks like for not just the salesperson who's role playing, but the the client who's actually in the role play, the coach. And I'm going to show you how Dave, the coach in the role play, should coach me uh, when I flub or mess up or make a mistake or stutter or have any type of lag in any of my communication. One more thing before you do that. There's also a gradient level of role play. That's true. So if it is your first day, you don't know the script, maybe it's you know the first two or three weeks. Your role playing, being able to read every word for word on, on yeah. the line, if you can do that, then it's a pass. But if you've been doing the same thing for three or six months, you should be able to just have the script in front of you and maybe just glance down at it. So you need to continuously, getting be continuously get better, and the gradient level of the flunk or the pass will also get higher. So we're gonna go with level Let's get, start at a lower level, yeah. so that way you guys can see what it would look like. Because Dave, what the Dave, the point that Dave is making right now is extremely important. Like I would even say to do exactly what both myself and Dave did when we first got here. Remember what Grant had us do when we first got here? There was a lot he had us do. Yeah. But he, <laughs> so he had us read the oh. script up against the wall. So we weren't even able to role play with a so, real person. So. <laughs> Literally, my first day after shooting whatever it takes, I come into the office and Grant says, okay, here's your script. And it wasn't even really a script. It was it was the front door. It was like eight pictures. And he sat me in a chair and wheeled me up against the wall, this white wall. And he said, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I want you to pitch the wall. Nope, don't look at Steve. Don't look at Jared. Pitch the wall. I'll be back at six o'clock tonight to see how you're doing. And for eight hours... I pitched the wall because he just wanted me to be able to get it out, not even have anything come back yeah. at me. And there's some things that actually happen when you do that. One, you get to practice on intention. You mm -hmm. get to practice the words. You get to practice on directly, because a lot of people, uh, they've got this, they don't want to confront, like, you know, if I pick up a script and I'm like, you know, Dave, and I'm like going in, like some people don't, ha they haven't built that muscle yet. This is all about building the muscle. So the wall would be a low gradient of, man, just stand up and practice it and pitch it. And like Dave's saying, dude, he did it all day long. It's the same thing that we've done. So let's go up a little, another gradient. So now we're face to face. It's still a lower gradient, right? So I'm gonna go, Dave, this is Steve from Grant Cardone's office. Hey, the reason for the call, Grant wanted me to reach out to you and get you set up with access to a tool that is designed to get you a 30% increase in sales. Now, to be sure I'm not wasting your time, how many salespeople do you have? Uh, I've got 10 guys. You've got 10 guys, excellent. And with those 10 guys, what would you say is the number one problem that they have in increasing sales? Uh, I don't know, Steve. You, you, I don't really have time for this right now. I'm pretty busy. Uh, okay. Flunk. If he has to think about it, that's the flunk. It should be automatically drilled in. So what Steve and I need to work on right now is we just need to think, like every, and I'm gonna tell him what he did great first. Hey dude, the, 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 the words were great, you know exactly what you're doing, the tension was awesome, but when you got your first objection, which was I'm busy, it threw you completely off. So let's just work on I'm busy. So I don't need to work on anything before that. I'm just gonna say, again, ready, start. Hey, I'm busy. I understand you're busy. That would keep you from looking at it, would it? Pass. And then we would run the whole thing back again and then it runs smooth, ready to do the whole thing? Yeah, it, a couple points I wanna make on that too is just, so what Dave's saying too is, you know, look look for the things that they could improve, you know? So here's a couple really simple things. If you're gonna practice to make it perfect, practice to make it perfect. So here's some simple stuff, you know, sit up straight. 
uh, right face, good attitude. You know, I can say the right words, but the right words with the wrong attitude is not going to get a deal. So low energy, no deal. Good energy, positive energy, like, but also uh, crazy over the top, like, dang, it's Steve. Yeah. Dude, also a, kind of weird, right? <laughs> that would be a flunk, right? So dude, I need to, look, real deal, like, hey, this is Steve from Grant Cardone's office. I need to be able to provide a positive communication, and then he's going to look for those things that uh, aren't as perfect where that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Now we found the problem and then he gave it to me and then of course I answered it correctly where I, I gave him a good response, he felt good about it, he passed me, but be prepared for it to not be perfect so that way you guys can actually work it out. Sometimes we'll even say things and it's like, you know, hey Flunk, uh, so I, I give you a say, say that better. Say it better. Say it better. And then say it again. And just because you got a pass doesn't mean that you stop either. Usually what would happen is Steve gets a pass. Okay, good. Now it's my turn to go. But it might be, hey, let's let's drill that in a five, ten times. Let's get ten yeah, passes let's get in a row. One, but let's move it up. Yeah, here. yeah. Okay. Dave, this is Steve from Grant Cardone's office. Hey, Grant wanted me to reach out to you and get you set up with a tool that was designed to increase sales by 30% for any company. To be sure I'm not wasting your time, how many salespeople do you have? Yeah, thanks for the call, not interested. Totally understand you're not interested, Dave, and I knew that you wouldn't be interested right now because you haven't seen the program yet. Listen, what's one or two problems that your people are having that's keeping them from getting more sales? Steve, thank you. Just send me an email. If I like what I see, I'll call you back. Done. What's your email? Dave at GrantCardone.com. I'm sending it over to you right now. Listen, Dave, I know you get a lot of emails. My intention is to give you something that gets your attention, and I know the only thing that will excite you is more deals, more opportunities, and to actually solve a problem. So if I could solve one problem for you with your sales team, what would that be? Pass. Okay, because it wasn't one objection. Now I'm hitting them with two objections, and and I'm kind of pushing back on them too. I'm not just saying, hey, I'm not interested. Hey man, I'm not interested. Send me an email, get back to you. So that the gradient goes up, but then of course, you know, you're dealing with a pro, a professional, uh, and then it's a pass, and well, it was one pass, but on two different objections. Yeah. Then it will get to the point where it's, I'm throwing out anything at any time. Not interested. Price is too high. Yeah. Need to think about it. Yeah, and, and we're just on the green. Like we could yeah. actually even role play things a little bit further. So let's go into the close. Okay. okay. So now, so so we're, we're we're maybe six nine months into the deal, and we're actually getting people on the phone. We're getting appointments set, but the problem we're having is actually getting the deal done. So that's what we're going to practice this morning. So I'm practicing the close. Steve, have you seen enough to make a decision? Yeah. Listen, we like it, Dave, but we're going to wait. Completely understand. You know, a lot of people want to wait. Now, the reason that you want to wait, would that be because of you don't think your people are going to use it, or maybe you're not the decision maker and you need somebody else to see it? Well, to be honest, we've used things like this in the past and it just didn't work. Tell me about that. When was the last time you invested $60,000 into your company, but you didn't actually use what you bought? Uh, I mean, to be honest, they don't even use the CRM. I completely understand. In fact, you, the reason that they're not using the CRM is probably the same reason they're not going to do this. Can I ask you a real question, Steve? Yeah. Who is responsible for the culture developed in your company? Uh, we leave that up to our managers. Okay, good. And how long are your managers gonna let that culture continue? Uh, well, they better make a change, actually. You ready to make a change today, or did you wanna wait for that change? <laughs> That's good, Dave, but listen, we don't wanna invest any more money when we've got other problems. Yeah, you shouldn't. When do you want those problems to change? Well, I mean, we need, you know, we're, this is why we are looking at things like this. We want to actually figure out a way to do it now. Good. Because looking at something, looking at a problem never changes it. Doing something about the problem will actually change this. Let's do this, Steve. Okay, good. Pass. Thank you. Right? So this is where we role play two different scenarios. We role play the greeting. We also role play, and that was more of like a cold call. Then we role play the close. And this is where, guys, look. If you like what you heard, me and Dave weren't born like this. Like we we work this muscle out. We've been doing it a lot. So we want to take some questions from you guys. We want to get you guys engaged. We've got our concierge on the call. She's going to read us the question. Yep. So we have a question from Miss Rhonda Welty. She hey, says, what's up, Rhonda? "Hey, she loves you guys." She says, "By the way." Um, she says, what is, uh, here's an objection she, she's encountering. She says, what is different about your services from the companies who, who've been doing this for 50 years? She's a, she, you said cabinetry? What is that? She's in what? 
so what she does is she provides um, insurance companies. So people have insurance, they okay. work directly with her in oh, order to get the so payments. She's giving the question, what's the difference between you and everyone else? Right, so the objection they keep getting is, oh, you know, we've been with somebody for 50 years, what's the difference between you and somebody who's been doing Perfect. this for a while? So this is, this is gonna be homework. Okay. This is a homework objection that you have to have. So anybody that ever gets that, which is everyone and everybody on this call, yeah. you're gonna answer three questions. Write this down. First question is, why your product? Why your product and nobody else's product, even if it's the same product, why your product? Second question is gonna be, why your company? Why your company against everybody else's company? Why would somebody do business with your company? And the third question is, why you? Why would somebody do business with you as a salesperson, even opposed to other salespeople inside your company? You have to dig deep and get these answers. We can't answer this for you. We can answer for us, but for you, you need to figure this out. This is gonna be some uh, internal internal, uh, internal things that you need to figure out first, but those exactly. are your three questions. I, I would okay. tell you that, so all those are exactly what you need to like figure out to be able to have some ammo, but let's go back to some of Grant's training also around these objections. So, so take that, so that way you can have material because we don't know your business and we don't know exactly you but what Dave's saying is dude understand you and why you're the value add also let's because me and Dave know this let's role play identifying what the real problem is mm -hmm. too right so uh, here's the one here's the facts here's the facts they took the call knowing that there's companies that have been in business for 50 years uh, here's another fact um, I don't care how long you've been in business what can you do for me today mm -hmm. That's what people want, man. They wouldn't even take the phone call if it wasn't for like, hey, what can you do for me today, right? You know who's been in business for 50 years? Who's that? Circuit City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blockbuster Video. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah, Ford Motor Company, and now you got companies like Tesla that are like yeah. passing. Yeah, how long has Tesla been around? Right? So this is where uh, that idea completely covers up what the real objection is. So this is perfect in order for you to practice this because what you want to start practicing is finding out, hey, what's the real objection? So if you guys been in our sales execution workshops, we spend a lot of time on this. So I want to role play this with Dave. Dave, you give me the objection. Hey, we're looking for somebody. Look, I appreciate this. I like everything, Steve, but why would I do business with you? I've already, I've already got a company I've been doing business with for 10 years. Why you instead of them? That's a great question, Dave. Can I ask you a, a quick question to answer that? Why did you take the call? Well, we were, you know, we, we just wanted to see what else is out there. Excellent. So I know that the only reason you would look at what else is out there is if you weren't completely satisfied with what was happening with your current client. Now, other than the fact that I haven't been in business for 50 years, Dave, is there any other reason why you wouldn't do this? Well, I would say that we really, we really know who they are and you're new to us. Yeah. So, so it would be just knowledge of, you know, can you send me some testimonials, some people that you've worked with so, so I, you know, I can check it out? Yeah, absolutely, Dave. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send all that over to you, but before I do it, I wanna tell you this. Look, the only reason that you would wanna go with somebody else other than me is because you didn't believe I could get the job done. So with what I've shown you so far, what do you, what have you seen that you don't think I can accomplish? Honestly, I, I don't know if my people are gonna use the program. Really? Yeah. Okay, so it's a usage thing. Yeah. Excellent. But if they did use it, it'd be worth it. Yeah, uh, yeah, if they did use it. Yeah, I mean, if they used it and you got half of what I told you was true, it'd probably be worth investing in both programs, right or wrong. Sure. Exactly. My job is to get your people to use it. My job is to get the results, okay? My job is to make sure that you get the most out of this program. So Dave, what I'm asking right now is to do this with me so that way I can help you get to the next level. Pass. Okay, so same thing is I'm gonna maybe get down. I'm, th this is where Grant talks about, look, there's selling and then there's closing. Once you're in closing, you don't go back to selling. So you wanna actually stay in that close. You need to have some ammo, some of the right words to say, but also I need to get down to, dude, what's the real objection? Let's close the deal. And he knew that I was on the right product. Like, we're, like the, if you've ever been to the sales execution workshop and you see me, Steve, deliver that, there is a lot more going on here than just the role play. And there's gonna yeah. be a lot of questions. Well, how would, you, how would you do this? How would you do that? Right now for this live, for this live, we're just structuring the practice, what the role play needs to look like. Yeah, that's true. Good stuff, guys.
So we have Mr. Gene Parker. People are loving this, by the way. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Gene Parker is getting the objection. He is an insurance and he's getting, I need to think about it. Dave, I love the insurance, but listen, man, I gotta think about it. Good, you should think about it. It's the right thing to do, okay? How long do you need to think about it, Steve? Do you need like two or three days or maybe two or three weeks? No, just let me, uh, let me, let me figure it out. I wanna find out if it's the right thing and uh, maybe just give me a couple days. Cool, so two days. Today's Friday. We've got all day Friday, Friday night, Saturday, then we've got Sunday, Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. So you're thinking by, by Valentine's Day, you'll be able to make a decision on this? I think so. Okay, good. So, you know, no matter how long you take, maybe the next two minutes or you wait till Valentine's Day, you're going to be faced with the same three questions. Can I share them with you? Yeah, sure. Sure. Number one, do you have the money for this? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I do. Second question. Do you want to do this? Uh, well, I got to do something. Yeah, but do you want to do this? Yeah, I think I want to do it. All right. Third question. Do you deserve to have Grant Cardone as a sales trainer for your entire company? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think it's the right thing. Good. Well, if it's yes to all three, and those are the three questions that you're going to ponder for the next two days, why don't we just take time out of the equation, say yes to this now, get it done. That way you can really enjoy Valentine's Day and be thinking about something else on Valentine's Day. Let's roll. Okay, good, pass. Good. See, so see how we're, we're, we're working it out there? Is using, Dave's using closes right out of Closer Survival Guide. So if you guys are on Cardone University, you guys go to the closing strategies, we're just pulling them right out of there and we're just using them, we're practicing them, we're drilling them, we're, we're rehearsing them. Now let's do some some bad role play. Yeah, some bad, some, some just some, some stuff that you shouldn't do and uh, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna tell Steve what I'm gonna do. Let's just. I'm just gonna set a bad example. I'm the. Uh, you're you're the salesperson, and I'm the. I'm the. Okay. What 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 area do you want to roll watch? It doesn't matter because I'm gonna mess it up anyway. <laughs> you you just go ahead and uh, clo you clo close. You close. Go ahead and close. Okay. So we'll go. Clo I'm the sales guy. You're, you're the, the sales guy. guy. Yeah. We've met. This is not practice. He doesn't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna set a bad example. So ask me for the close. Dave, listen. We've shown you the product. We've shown yeah. You not interested. Or uh, yeah. It's too much money. Now, I understand it's uh, too much money, Dave, but listen, that would keep you from Just send me a contract. Uh, okay, good. I'm going to send over so the contract. So he should flunk me for that. Yeah. It's not It's not even real, right? And, and if you're dealing with somebody that's like that, dude, something happened before that it's not, you're not even in the deal. Right? So where we talk about gradients, right, where we had a low gradient, pitching the wall would be a low, the lowest gradient, right? And then we're kind of walking through it. This would be like so high that it's not even – real that this would happen. The, if you're dealing with a decision maker and he actually is wanting the program and he's not just sport negotiating with you, which might happen yeah. sometimes. Which is also fun to role play. It's his, oh, I love the sport negotiation, but I'm not even, I'm not being a good role play person because yeah. my job is to make him better. And if I'm just interrupting him and stopping his communication, it, I'm not letting him it's like it's like I'm, we're 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 at batting practice, and I'm 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 throwing the balls one right after the other, and not even giving him a chance to hit it. Yeah, so the practice is it's bad practice. Yeah, and it's my fault as the coach. Yeah. Now let me give you some other things. Now that we're talking about mistakes on role play, and one of the mistakes would be uh, so Dave gives me an objection. Let's say you gave me an objection. Uh, price on, is too high. Price is too high, uh, and I can't handle it. Dave flunks me. Flunk. Flunk, okay, good. Now we go back into it. Dave, have you seen enough to make a decision? And Dave gives me something completely different. Yeah, like, well, I need to talk to my wife. Oh, okay. So if you're gonna practice, like, man, if I found something that I'm not good at, you know, if I'm going to the gym because I want to get bigger biceps, I need to work the biceps. If I'm in a role play and I find out that I couldn't handle that first objection about money, I don't need to jump to something else. I need to stay word for word. So the coach is really important in this. The coach needs to say exactly the same thing when you go back to repeat it. And you can do this two, three, four times. I have some of my guys, when we role play with these guys, we'll have them do the same objections day after day after, for like two or three weeks. Why? Because we want them to get it right. So question for you guys, Mr. Alex Zestopil, who's going to be in the diamond section at GrowthCon, him hey, and his wife. Send me an email, Dave at GrantCardone.com. I'll get you the best seat in the house. Love that. So he's asking, how much time per day do you allocate towards role play with the wall every day? And is the frequency a time a day or two? 
It's every day. That's and right. on our sales team, it's from 8.40 to 9 o'clock. It's 20 minutes, Monday through Friday. And I believe that we also have a pounders meeting, a plus day on Saturday for yeah. 20 minutes. So they're role playing six days a week. Yeah. Okay. So we're 20 minutes a day. So we do Carter University every single morning. We all train on the same material and then we discuss it for about 10 minutes. Then we role play. We role play, uh, you know, we basically get together in the similar groups. So the new people will be role playing the same things. We might put a, a more veteran coach with those guys so that we make sure they're doing it right. They're flunking each other on the right yeah. things. And, right. We're, and we're not trying to give them like this, we're not trying to give them the pizzazz. I'm not trying to like give them all the best war tracks. Dude, I'm just trying to get the guy to be willing to confront the call. Most salespeople aren't even willing to make the call because they can't confront it. We gotta get them to be able to practice that and work it out. Then we start finessing the word track. So these guys are holding the scripts. They don't, they're, they're not role playing without scripts for like a year or two. Yeah. Uh, one other thing is you really wanna be able, I mean, you want that to be a real role play. Yes. And you were talking about frequency, like how often should you do it? You should be thinking about it like this. I went to the dentist last week and I asked the dentist, I was like, well, you, you, they told me you should brush and floss every day. And I was like, every day? And they said, only brush and floss the teeth every day that you want to keep. So only role play on the days that you want to make more money. If you're like, you wake up this morning and you're like, I'm Mike Chill, I got enough money. You know, I'm, I don't need any more money. <laughs> don't role play that day. So, and, and also, like, we've got a saying in our office. You do not practice on the customer. These are grants leads that he's built. So if you're a business owner on this call and you know about building a business, then you know, dude, you don't want to hire people that are practicing on the customer. You want to have them practicing on each other and then go practice and then go work with the customer. Yeah. You know, so that's what we're doing. So this, this is for pros. Question. This is for pros. This is not this is not the amateur. The amateurs need to do this, but if you want to get to pro, you have to do it every day because after pro is master and master is do it yeah. every single day. And then also on the other side of that too is you don't need to role play all day off. Nope. You need to role play. You need to spend 20 minutes of role playing every single day. And then you need to get on the phone. It's like there's an unbelievable uh, schooling in actually getting in front of the customer. There's uh, so much experience. Like you can't bypass experience and get to a master before you go out there and play. You know, so the, the professional sports team the Tampa Bay Bucks, dude, they practice on in practice, they gotta get to the game at some point or else they're never gonna get to that championship and that's where you guys gotta get this down. Last thing, uh, when you're role playing a lower grade down role play, you can also role play having the great attitude. That, totally. And you can role play agreement. So role playing, having a great attitude, let's, let's give them an example of each one of those. So, Funny that you mentioned that because yeah. Andres Mijares is saying, how can I fix the tonality in my voice, which goes hand in hand with having a yeah. good attitude. I don't, I don't know about your tone, but I know about mm -hmm. your attitude. And uh, so we can, role, we can role play the attitude. Steve's going to be kind of, kind of, he's going to be tough on me, yeah. right? I'll be tough. Yeah. So this stuff you got to practice. So, uh, hey Steve, it's Dave over here in Grant Cardone's office. Good morning. Dave, listen, you guys gotta take me off the list. Yeah, yeah, I'll take you off the list, okay? But first, I need you to listen to me, right? The reason for the call. Blunt, yeah. blunt, blunt. <laughs> like, I can't blunt. get upset. Terrible. <laughs> Just terrible, blunt. Okay, let me redo it then. All right, go. Okay. Steve, it's Dave over here at Grant Cardone's office. Good morning. Dave, listen, you guys gotta take me off the list. Yeah, no problem, man. I'd love to take you off the list. Did you want me to take you off the more money list or the more success list? <laughs> you guys are good, seriously. You guys call me too much. Yeah, we do. I mean, I, every day I get told I'm calling too much. But the reason I'm calling too much is because we want to increase, we have a tool that increases revenue by 30 plus it. Yep, because I go ahead, yep. skipped on that word. Thank you, go. So the reason I'm calling too much is because we have a tool that actually increases sales by 30% less than 30 days. I just want to show it to you. I don't know if it's going to be the right fit, but a guy like you that's busy and gets too many calls probably is looking for something to help your team. Yeah, you're right. Awesome. Yeah. See, so, so practice that good attitude. Pass. That was good. Pass. Pass. That was a pass. That was a pass. How about this, guys? Roots is asking. Uh, he gets the objection. You seem young and inexperienced. Yeah, How do you handle that? It's only because of what you're saying. It's only because you. It's only because of your pitch. So, I all I would get that too when I when I didn't sound like I knew what I was talking about. And and that's where the role play 
gets you to a place where like you can build up some confidence and like literally speak with this authority because you should be the authority in your place, right? So the role play will get you to a place where you sound better, where it's like, you know, when I came to work for Grant Cardone, I'm calling business owners to tell them that I can help you increase sales in your company. And they're like, these guys are twice my age and like I never ran a business. And so they're like, why, how are you gonna be able to help me actually run my business better? And the reality was, dude, it wasn't me who was doing it. I was trying to sell them on Grant Cardone helping them. And so I had to get back to the salesperson. I had to know what I was doing. I had to know what problem I was solving. And I had to have a good pitch so I could get their attention for a second. And that comes with that role play. And, bro, you're creating that. You're creating that because you think you're too young or you're too inexperienced. And you're creating it because you're not role playing. Like what Steve said, the if you roll and you can you can be anybody you want in role play. You need to practice. I am the millionaire throwing the pitch down. I'm the greatest salesperson in the world, and that's what you need to role play being this. You need to role play being the master salesperson and role play and role play. Do not role play being the amateur. Well, I'm going to practice being the amateur today, young and inexperienced. You need to role play the confidence, role play the agreement, role play the smoothness, role play the attitude. That's everything. You spend 20 minutes doing that every day, you got a much better shot at having a great day at work yeah. than not role playing it, which is amateur. Exactly, so now, in what Dave's talking about is, is he's really talking about, dude, practice being that. So that way you can like, like be that, right? And, and so then there's that side, which is probably more important than anything. On the other side of it, you're just saying the right things. I mean, the reality is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that wouldn't keep you from looking at it, would it? Like, I want to practice some of the good word tracks I learned in Cardone University. The things that Grant talks about where he's like, dude, you can say this, but the right words with the wrong intention or the wrong confidence will not get you anywhere. So like, what Dave's saying is probably the most senior, most important thing, but then also use your Cardone University to get the right words down. I think we got time for one more. We do. So we're getting from David Estime. He said, how would you combat, I've used you guys in the past and had a bad experience? I would ask him, tell me about that. I want, if he's got a problem or he's ridged up on something, there's some consideration there. I want to know what it is. I'm like, every time somebody tells me that, I'm excited. Money. Because, that, yeah, money, because there's a problem, David. There's a problem there. And problems are opportunities. Because if you can fix that guy's problem, guaranteed this is not the only time that this guy's ever spent spent his money on something and not been happy with it. But if you can solve this problem, you're probably gonna be able to solve all his other problems. And if you solve somebody's problem, you have a client for life. I'm looking for problems. I need bigger problems. Yeah. In fact, if you've got some problems, tell me about it. Because I'm looking for bigger problems. <laughs> so like, what I would tell you is one thing to consider on that they said yes once, mm -hmm. that's such a good thing. So Dave's saying go back, like rehabilitate whatever problem they were trying to solve that didn't get done and let's find out. And I wouldn't go too deep into it. The, the reality is they probably like backed off on it. They get, like I deal with this all the time. Like we'll call people that used to use our program or something and they'll be like, yeah, we used it, but it didn't work. Dude, tell me, tell me about how you used it. Yeah. You know, well, you know, we did this and that. I'm saying, well, dude, my fault, man. If, if I was on this account, I would have shown you how to use it. Okay, let me let me show you one or two things now that we've changed that will get you a 10x result. Will make up for every investment you've done, and that's where when we when we do this, when we I got to be role played on it. If not, I'm going to fall short on every objection. That's right. All right. Thank you guys so much for your time. I know you got to hit the phones and help some more people around the world. Right. Mr. Dave Robards, Thanks, Steve folks. Spray. Go give him a follow on IG Clubhouse. All those things. That's right. Thank you guys for your time. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you